Good morning and welcome to the Killick & Go Market Updates. This week it has been reported that the UK has come to an agreement in principle on its divorce bill from the EU. So this has actually sent sterling higher. It was reported before that the divorce bill was the main issue holding up the Brexit negotiations. So now that we do have some kind of agreement on this, it means we should be able to proceed with trade negotiations. So this should be good for the economy over the longer term and that's why sterling has gone higher. Despite the fact that the divorce bill is rumoured to be in the region of about £50 billion. Pounds. To put that into concept, context, that that's about the amount that we spent on defence last year. So as I said, sterling has gone higher on the news of the agreements. And this chart here just shows sterling over the last two years. So as you can see, there was a significant fall in sterling immediately following the Brexit referendum last year. After that, it did fall even more. But as you can see over the last week, since we've had the news about the divorce bill agreement, there has been a small uptick in the current. So that's, so that's definitely a good thing for the UK economy. However, when sterling goes higher, that does tend to be negative for the FTSE 100. So actually, over the month of November, we did see a 2% fall in the FTSE 100. And the reason for that is that most companies within the FTSE 100 are quite international in nature. So when they earn money overseas, they have to convert that money back into sterling. If the pound is higher, it does make their profits appear lower. So that's why when sterling goes up, the value of the FTSE 100 does come down. Now, it's definitely a good thing that we have had an agree agreement on the divorce bill for the UK. And I think that will lead to an improvement in sentiment for the UK economy. And that's a good thing because we are already starting to see nervous nervousness about Brexit feeding through and really damaging our economy. And to give you a recent example of this, we had an update from TfL this week. So that's Transport for London. And they've actually said that the nervousness around Brexit is starting to harm their passenger numbers for the London Underground. And they've actually downgraded their estimates of passenger numbers for next year. So total number of passengers on the tube this year is about 1.4 billion. And for next year, TfL has downgraded their estimate to just 1.3 billion. So that's quite a large fall in percentage terms, and it will negatively Negatively impact their income for next year and therefore it is likely to delay planned upgrades to the tube so that's definitely a negative for the economy and I thought this quote from their last update was quite interesting so they've just said that they've seen lower growth in demand for their services than they previously forecast and that's really due to a number of different economic factors particularly uncertainty over Brexit and they've also pointed to lower consumer confidence growth stagnating in the UK lower real wage growth and a softening housing market so that's all the reasons they've given for downgrading their forecast for London over the next year Also in the UK this week, we've had the FTSE 100 quarterly reshuffle. Now, the FTSE 100 is simply the largest 100 companies on the stock exchange by market capitalization. And obviously, that's changing all the time. So once per quarter, the index is rearranged to get rid of any companies that have become too small and include any companies that have become large enough to be included. So this week, we have had the reshuffle, and six companies will be moving, three up and three down. And I think to look at the companies that are moving does give you, give you quite a good indication of what's been happening in the, in the economy in recent times. So the three companies moving in are Just Eats, Dia Smith and Halma, and the companies moving out and into the FTSE 250 are Merlin, Convertech and Babcock. So Just Eat, that's the takeaway firm, that's now bigger than Sainsbury's, Morrison's and Marks and & Spencer's, so that suggests that as a nation we now prefer takeaways to shopping in supermarkets. D.H. Smith is a, or D.S. Smith, sorry, is a packaging company, and I think that does make sense because we are spending more on online retail, there are many more online deliveries, that requires more packaging, so therefore we are increasing our demand for the services of D.S. Smith. And last of all, Halma is a sensors and engineering company that makes products for sensing hazards. Um, I think we have become more safety conscious as a nation and there are many more regulations, so it makes sense that dem demand for those goods has increased as well. Looking at the companies moving out, Merlin, that's the entertainment group that earns Alton Towers. They also own a lot of attractions within cities such as Madame Tussauds and London Dungeons. And they've actually said in their last trading update that because people have become more afraid of terrorist attacks, their visitor numbers have declined. So that's why the size of the company has fallen and they've dropped out of the FTSE 100. Convertech is a medical devices company. They had a profit warning earlier this year and they cited increased competition as the reason for that. And last of all, Babcock is a defence company that relies quite heavily on the UK for revenue and UK defence spending has not risen for a number of years. So that's why Babcock has dropped out of the FTSE 100. 
Now, in the weeks following a FTSE 100 reshuffle, we do tend to see quite a lot of volatility and volume in the names that have moved. And the reason for that is that ETFs and tracker funds have to readjust their holdings so that they can continue to mimic the index that they're supposed to be tracking. So we would expect to see a bit of volatility in these names over the coming days. And I've got two points regarding the US this week. First of all, growth for the third quarter has been revised upwards to 3.3%. That's definitely a good thing, and that was good for stock markets. Second of all, there was supposed to be a vote on Thursday regarding US tax reform. And in anticipation of that, we did see a bit of a sectoral rotation around the stock market this week. Particularly, we saw a move out of companies that wouldn't benefit so much from a cut in corporation tax, for example, technology companies, because they tend to hold a lot of cash offshore. Then we saw people moving into companies that would stand to benefit from a cut in tax, such as financials. So earlier this week, we saw a move out of tech into financials. However, we learned last night that the vote on tax reform has been delayed, so we will have to wait and see what happens there. Moving on to the week ahead, we will be looking forward to results from the plumbing and heating company Ferguson. That's it from us. Have a great weekend and we'll see you next Friday.